Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. You should be able to hear me. Um, I'll just say hello. Hi, my name is Omega Jones. I'm also known as the Critical Bard. Um, I am a professional vocalist and actor from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I've been in the community for about a year and a half now-ish. Uh, and it's been really cool to see the growth of the community, specifically the black community, since I've been a part of it. And I know other people have been a part of it, been a part of it much, much longer than I have. So I want to go around this table, this virtual tabla, and introduce yourselves. You know, you don't got to give a whole biography, but if you want to, you can, especially you, Tanya. Um, so, uh, let's start with Tanya, actually. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Sonia, also known as Cypher Tier. Um, I am a developer and also uh, on Rivals War Deep, which is an actual play show, which is an official Wizards of the Coast show. We're on Sundays on twitch.tv backslash DMD. And I write, I do a lot of diversity in the gaming space. And I'm, my big project right now is working on the RPG based on MK Jemison's uh, Broken Earth trilogy. Uh, Christina. <laughs> Hi, my name is Christina Ariel, and I play a lot of TTRPGs. I'm on Sirens of the Realms. I played Bear Posset on Honey Heist 3. I played Regardless, and I like to talk about stuff on the internet all the time. And also, my baby is here because my husband went to work. <laughs> um, and really quickly, because this is a reoccurring thing for me, I am changing the title. I know it says I'm playing Black Ops. I'm obviously not playing Black Ops. <laughs> Y'all can deal with it. You know what's going on. Gabe, go. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabe. I am a cosplayer, voice actor, designer, and video editor, uh, and tabletop player. Um, I started playing really in like the online community, pretty much like CB did in the last year and a half, almost two years. Um, and like I, I've been in tabletop since college. My college project was, I had to run a successful Kickstarter. And I, after that, I knew that like, I enjoyed being in this community. Uh, Brandon. Uh, my name is Brandon Dixon. Uh, you may also know me as Swordsfall guy. Uh, I write Swordsfall, uh, Afropunk, sci fantasy universe. Uh, we kickstarted our first book uh, last year. So I guess I could say I've been like officially in the community for a year, um, but I've been doing like random secret stuff in the background. I've done like little ghost writing for sites that no longer exist. I've done some ghost writing for sites I can't talk about. Uh, I ran a gaming convention in Little Rock, Arkansas. So if anyone remembers 2010 Little Rock Game Con, that was me. Uh, it was pretty cool. It wasn't the best, but learned a lot of stuff and uh, kind of put all that into Swordsfall. So I write, I do like little design. I made like the map and just trying to be like that creator that I wanted when I was a kid. Uh, awesome. Um, also, as someone I said it in chat, I know that uh, you're going to hear some alerts. It's the bits for the most part. Everything else is turned off because it's not about the alerts. I don't really don't need to see that. Uh, Michael. Hi, yeah, I'm uh, Michael Sinclair II. Uh, you might see me as Michael Critz everywhere. I've been playing d and for five years. Uh, it was like my last deployment. I got into Dungeons and Dragons, knew that these stories were important, and I wanted to tell stories of people who look like me and all different types of people. Um, I am in two uh, shows. One is a podcast, Faith Forge Academy, where I play Besky Nevery, and I also play in the Cobalt Press channel where I play... Gervain. Uh, so that's what I do. I also play Match of the Gathering. Huge into that. There's a whole other stuff that's associated with that. But anyway, um, but I also uh, used to be a life coach and I just want to be able to um, contribute to today and to the tabletop role playing game scene. I'm also uh, just got picked up, I think, to start writing articles for a website. I'm not going to go into that. Don't know if it's solid yet. So there you go. Come on, Black Excellence, period. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, Honey and Dice. Hello, everybody. I'm Honey, a.k.a. Honey and Dice. Um, I am a cybersecurity professional and IT administrative specialist. Um, I am the creator of the Embrace the Initiative workshop, which was a uh, convention-based 
uh, workshop to help people become more confident and comfortable DMs and GMs in their space. Um, I teach parents about cybersecurity for their children, how to protect um, their teenagers and their children's online. Um, my Southern is coming out because I just said children's, but you're just going to have to deal with it. Um, and I am a DM, a GM storyteller, depending on what the system is. Just started doing the online stuff publicly about a year and a half ago with everyone, but I've been running and writing games and stuff for years. Um, and I am here because Omega asked and I love him. And I am super nervous, but excited to have this conversation with everyone. Um, I think um, um, everyone can be a little nervous. I mean, I know we all are performers or people who are in the public view, um, but it doesn't matter if you've been doing this for a day or 10 years. Um, like, this is still some real stuff. So I'm nervous. <laughs> and I will get in, on a stage and scroll to the heavens with ease. I, I don't, I can do that. But this is a little different. Um, but um, yeah, let's, oh gosh, the donation goal has already been reached. Wow. Oh, wow. Hey. Wow. And broken. And broken. <laughs> so uh, you might want to double that. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, also, do I get to give it back to you today? How you gave me a hard time on Tuesday, sir? Nope, nope, nope. Mm -hmm. yep. Hey, you do. Mm -hmm. yep. The Bible yep. said, yep. Yes. the Bible yep. said in first do not try me Lations that you can't do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not an actual verse. And also I ain't Christian, so <laughs> gone with that um, logic. In the uh, extra edition. <laughs> is that Bible DLC? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and get, I'm going to put it at 5,000. Don't think we're going to do it. So I'm going to put it at 5,000. In the spice remix. Oh, what, did, what did I say? Y'all talked about me all like a dog on Tuesday, so now I'm giving it back to you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but let's go ahead and get this thing uh, kicked off. So I guess the biggest thing that we can just start with is how do you feel black folk thrive or don't thrive in the community currently? You, we only have an hour. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Then you know what? Give give us a spark mm. notes and uh, and, and let's go. <laughs> um. So the ways in which we thrive is that this is probably the most black folks I've seen in one spot for RPGs in Period. a while. Period. Period. Like, together table. or like going to conventions. I we've been seeing more black and brown folks, but specifically more black folks in the space and being visible and being like, oh, I play D and D. I didn't know you played D and D. Or, you know, Mouse Guard or what have you, or Vampire, you know, B Dave's fault that we're all back playing Vampire. <laughs> um, and the ways in which we don't thrive is like the usual bullshit in which we don't thrive in everyday America and other places is that, oh, well, the color of your skin shouldn't matter. It's fantasy. And I was like, it's a fantasy for you, maybe. Mm -hmm. But when you put this stuff in games that like all the brown characters are poor, they were former slaves, orcs are allegory for racist caricatures and, and they're always stupid and savages, et cetera. I would like to sit at a table and not have you pull out your character that, oh, by the way, tee -hee, I had slaves in my character when I want to punch you in the face for this. Um, so those are ways in which people just literally don't think about who is at the table, who is watching them mm -hmm. in this era of stream games. Because we made our characters, our rivals, all black for a reason. Not just because we're all black, but it's like, oh no, you gonna get some brown folks in your DNA. Mm -hmm. You gonna learn I'm today, sorry. period. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's real. That is so real, and especially you hitting on the fact that there's always got to be a character with a slavery black black background black background. Brown. Nope. I'm gonna call it a black brown <laughs> right now because that's what it basically is. You're trying to do, um, and we I just don't start get you it. in these chains, <laughs> right? And you're illiterate, and you come from a broken family. I, I'm not. I'm not going to eat. Like I now, that's a whole conversation I can have. But I that's roundtable right. number two. Yeah. yeah. Why is yeah, yeah, alert yeah. still going off? I turned them off. Oh, so you were you were talking about thriving. I think, I think, and thriving. Even if we were already there, we're starting to be seen, mm -hmm. which is the nice thing. Um, but where it's not thriving is even if you're being seen, you're not being heard, or people are 
people say they want something, but they're not expanding their groups. They're not changing the people they're playing with. Mm -hmm. They're not changing their friend groups. If you tell me that you want to see more black people and then in your personal game that's not streamed or anything, it's only the same people and it will continue being the same people. Mm -hmm. You tell me that you care, but have done nothing to improve it. Because if there's that one black person who wants to play the tabletop game and you know they want to play it and you never offer because you don't want to expand your group, you're not helping. You're speaking about it. But if you don't put your voice to action in some way, it's really hard to trust that people mean it when they say it. Yep. I think the other part of, of being able to speak out is you can't speak out without being spoken over. I think we all wake up every morning to a reasonable amount of you don't know what you're talking about. There's no such thing as racism. C words, B words, N words. Like, mm -hmm. oh no, we're all black we do, here. We can say it. <laughs> I don't. Okay. For because of my grandma's told me not to, and I still imagine her popping me in the mouth. <laughs> no, so that's real. I, that's real. Yeah, that's real. But the thing is, like, when when you're dealing with not only the racism part of it, you're dealing with people that you trust telling you that they don't see it. They've never had that experience and they've yeah. never seen that behavior from a person. So they don't necessarily believe you. But of course you've never seen the behavior from a person because you're not black. Like yeah. you've never had anybody say those things to you because they don't have to. And then you see all the stuff that's said amongst each other as a joke oh, no. and you're so used to it as a joke and it's our real experience in life uh i gotta go ahead and um up the goal again uh if i may uh christina mm -hmm. uh yeah i uh, just want to kind of add on to the conversation that you know tanya spoke into this and i see a couple of you folks as well uh playing black characters in fantasy and uh, mm -hmm. it's very for me it's very intentional i think it's the same for most or everyone here that it's yep. it's almost just a fantasy to play a black character in a fantasy game like and and that's something why i continuously keep just playing black human black human black human because it is not something that i see in the fantasy genre or like in these games and i have to insert myself into the narrative um you know there's and then tanya uh, tanya also spoke into uh you know there being orcs and it's always this kind of like all these negative attributes that get put onto them. And I've wanted to play an orc because I feel like their narrative is similar to like, you know, some of the black experience. So, but I haven't yet played an orc because it's not a fantasy to play an orc at the moment. It's a fantasy just to play, you know, people who look like me or uh, in games. I don't know if you folks uh, feel similar if I'm off base, but that's kind of just my input. And like the characters are black. I, I definitely, um... Uh, and to preface, and just so the world knows, we all are black, but we all can have different views in some way, shape, or form, but no one's invalid at all. Um, I think there's, I think people sometimes believe, um, I'm trying to phrase it right. Like, I mean, I'm going to use this as the most um, clear, most forward, like, example I can think of, and that's Bo. Speak your heart. Um, I personally do not mind that Marisha is playing a brown character because she's not playing a caricature of a brown character. There's a lot of times when people make brown characters and the only way they can play said brown character is to be a stereotype and an archetype of what they think that brown character is. And that is the problem. Um, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't understand. Like, just because I'm black, it doesn't automatically, I mean, just go to the extremes of it. Doesn't automatically b mean that I like fried chicken, even though I do. It doesn't automatically believe I like watermelon. I don't. Um, like, all these things, like, they aren't what make you black. You just being you and being true to you is what matters. And I think people don't understand that specifically non-black people and i say non-black people and not say white because not uh, other people of color who aren't black do the same thing um so it's it's just something to know one thing that kind of is what got me into it is it took me a long time into like my adulthood to realize that it was actually common among black people 
to have dreams where you weren't black, that your hands were white. And I realized that that came from being exposed to characters and, and properties that were just always so white centric that I couldn't even base an imagination of myself being black in my dreams. Mm -hmm. And then I also later on had to realize that uh, it's my coffee maker. Everything's fine. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I also had to realize later on that, oh, Brandon, you know why you always pick the monster race in a game? Because it's the closest thing that you felt to minority character. But oh, that's actually because it's coded as black and they don't have any other regular characters that are black. So the only one you even remotely have a connection to is the monster character. And for me, that's the weird trap I found myself realizing mm -hmm. that I had been in because of media, right? It's like having to just deprogram that stuff to even get to the core of, okay, now can I figure out who I am now that I've deprogrammed all this other stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, like, that's always the thing that I feel like we miss a little bit in the scene is because people will see one stuff is obviously racist, right? If someone comes to my page and goes, ah, oh, hey, nigger, people go, oh man, racism, and they get that. But when I go, hey, do we have to have a campaign where we do genocide? That's where stuff gets lost because then it's like, well, we need to talk about why that's a popular theme versus other things, uh -huh. you know? And it's, that's the part I find us having a hard time addressing is like those subtle parts. I, I have gotten to the point I, I like playing elves in any system. Mm -hmm. And if I hear one more person tell me, oh, I like your wood elf because they're brown. <laughs> mm. I'm Are you so playing a weird. druid? Like, like it, it was literally, I, I've played elves in many campaigns and if they're brown, I hear wood elf every time. And like, no, they're just a brown person. It, yeah. it, but the <laughs> idea of a brown person that's any sort of elf is obviously an elf that lives in the woods for whatever reason. That's, and it's so exhausting because even if it's not met with malintent, the first question is like, why? Or what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how is that? There's there's never anything like really in, mo in most fantasy genres that say what color their skin is. Mm -hmm. What else? They have pointy ears. They don't talk about skin color, but it's so ingrained that people decide, well, that's the way it has to be. No, that's not. <laughs> No, it's I also ingrained that black yeah well sorry, sorry Gabe. but it's oh. also ingrained that if you say an elf is black they go from zero to drow yep yeah sorry yeah. Yep. <laughs> are you okay no not i'm not <laughs> but no so brandon brandon on a show talked about why he specifically made his character black and he's a high wizard and he's a dark-skinned elf and somebody immediately replied to him oh so you're a drow and i was like oh, yeah, and to add on to Gabe's thing, like he talked about like wood elves, right? Like you're an elf, you're brown or black, you're a wood elf, and then they throw you into that. And a recent article got, or not article, it was a Google doc from someone in the Magic the Gathering community, D&D &D and Magic the Gathering kind of close, but they're just like, oh, someone's black, they're the mystical Negro figure. Like they're gonna give you your lesson so that you can succeed the day. And that's not that's not us, like, right? We're trying to play full full characters with, you know, the whole spectrum and story and background story. I, I think one of the... Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I cosplayed an elf character that had gray hair. So I made my hair gray and someone thought I was a drow. And I was like, I need you to leave <laughs> now. <laughs> like Re it's... Really quickly, because, just because again, y'all trying me. I'm just gonna raise the goal to 25,000. Uh, I'm gonna keep it there. <laughs> Onion Dice, do you uh, have anything kind of add on? I was going to say I'm fairly new to the streamed playing with groups of people with your face, all that kind of stuff um, aspect of the tabletop RPG community. Before I've been years on forums, years in chat rooms, years on text-based you know, RPGs and so on. So I've seen every spectrum of um, the expectation if your character has even a hint of melanin in the skin. Mm -hmm. And I think most people, when they started playing online, they were not creating characters that were Black at all. You would create a character that was anything else and kind of excuse it as, well, I'm Black every day. I get to play whatever character I want. Let's create this or that. Not right. knowing what's been coded in the back of your mind. 
but I have never been apologetic about being black and not being aware of how without seeing my face that would impact people. I had the experience of meeting someone for the first time that we had been playing online for years. And, you know, you do first impressions. And her, one of the things that she said to me was, please don't take offense, but I didn't expect for you to really be black. And I just said, did you, did you think I was talking about like, I lick my arm and I taste like chocolate, like all oh. the the nicknames and so on about being a chocolate ho hobbit or a halfling and so on. You play on lots of games with me. So when I started to play with people in larger platforms and I'll mention um, the charity streams and so on, I say, you know what? My characters are gonna be black. I don't care if they're halflings, elves, humans, um, it doesn't matter they're going to be black because why not <laughs> if you can be purple green orange this and that something being brown shouldn't be such a shock then i realized that it was okay to play a brown character as long as that was just the color but everything else was very euro um coded say that mm -hmm. and um that's how one of the characters I played, Bisquelia Honeysuckle, AKA Biscuits, uh, when they started asking me to get involved with Uncaged, um, I just dug really deep into childhood memories and comfort levels and so on. And she's just this feisty little halfling. And she's like, do you know who your mama is? I don't know who your mama is. And she's just this very Southern sweetheart because those are fond memories. And I start to drop little things in there, no matter what accent I'm using, I'm pulling from my culture, my history and the stories that I grew up in, whether it was from a Nazi or stories of um, African princesses or the stories that come from the people in my family who were Choctaw and all this kind of stuff and bring it all together to create characters because how else are people gonna get used to it unless they start seeing it? But that is a lot of work. Really, that is so much work. Really quickly, I want to give a huge, 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 huge shout out to the mods. The they mods. are killing it in mm -hmm. this right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm, I just happen to see everything and I'm like, caught, caught, caught. I appreciate that. Y'all doing good. Thank you. Continue. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's, I was going to say, so playing brown characters, black characters, and so on, again, when I caught it was, it was okay to be brown as long as it was Euro coded. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm. Um, and when you brought up the point about the slavery background, my very first sensitivity reading assignment, someone had created a character with that background and it was for mm. something similar to that background. And I said, you know, uh -oh. everyone's story of going through adversity and developing into a hero doesn't have to fall into a trope. you don't have to go this direction to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be more powerful if you do not. Um, so yeah, that's, you started talking about brown characters versus, you know, white characters, or even there was a whole bunch of people, you love anime and so on, you were playing Asian characters up the wazoo, anything but a character with a little brown in their skin. Um, which I think happens because that's what the norm is until you start changing it. Mm -hmm. I think Ariza is my first <laughs> character. And if you know, hear the name and you think Arisha Ariza, like, you know what it's about. But it just, I want my characters to look like me. I want to go, I want people to see that we can be in this setting that we can exist. And I mean, it's not just saying in D&D, &D, but it's hard for people to imagine black people in any position but a slave or a service position mm -hmm. because that's what they're accustomed to seeing. And even in fantasy, mm -hmm. that's something that we can't get away from. But then when you do try to broach that subject and say, hey, you're hurting somebody's feelings. The next thing you know, somebody's crying because you've hurt their feelings with your facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like when 
I'm going to stay on this train of if someone is confiding in you, that's a trust. It is a trust that I am uncomfortable. And in a lot of gaming situations, me and my black character are the only black people at the table. Mm -hmm. And that can be a very isolating feeling, especially if someone says something that is, we'll say sketchy at best. Mm -hmm. And you not only have to defend yourself to that person, you are defending yourself to a whole room. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of feelings right now because all of this, like, with everything that's going on, we're not going to, like, tiptoe around it. And we need to be able to exist, be that in game, be it in life, be it when we're walking down the street. We need to exist, and we need to be able to exist as our whole selves. Mm -hmm. And people need to not be threatened by our whole selves. Mm -hmm. Like, there are, like, there's code switching for a reason. We are Mm -hmm. multifaceted, but we also know that switch is to survive. We shouldn't have to survive in game. If you say that game is an escape, it should not be another place that we have to survive or fight a history of oppression or like not be able to be a fucking Mary princess and not have sadness behind it. Like, no, I'm regal AF. I'm not about to play your slave. Get out of my face. (laughs) Yeah. uh... We. Oh, go ahead, Christina. No, I just, I'm saying, I just, all of this ties in, like, even letting those characters exist and not have to have stereotypical traits or Mm -hmm. any of those things. Like, just let people exist. Let us exist as our whole selves Mm -hmm. and be mindful of the people at the table and the language that you're using because it does affect and impact no matter however your intention was. And you may think it's funny to be like, oh, hey about the characters and do stereotypical black vernacular but it'll also get you slapped Uh, (laughs) yeah uh just to kind of go on something that you brought up christina like obviously we all of us saying we are playing black characters or um you know any other uh the races available to through whether rpg we're playing with black skin and so like not only in the world do we feel like it's us against the world you know in in D and D, sometimes it can feel solo against the world because you don't see anyone else. There's no communities, and I, I kind of want to speak on like the dungeon master front, mm-hmm. like right to dungeon masters. I've been one as well. Uh, there has to be a community of like black brown people because it's like we there are community like if we exist in your world, there's automatically there should be a community that exists of black and brown people you can't just be like this solo spark of a black person which can happen if that's what you want as a character but like you know there should be a community of color that you know isn't uh you know just farmland or the the economy is not great like there needs to be like you know a spectrum right um so that's kind of what i kind of want to speak into on the point that you said like you know we're, we're playing a black character and we're um and and with that, we're usually just the only black person in the world. So it's even more isolating. Some of the extremes happen, like all the good and all the bad can happen with that extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then there was another point I was going to bring up. Uh, I'll think about it. And if uh, <laughs> I'll think so about it, say it. I'll say it. I'll say it if it comes up. No, uh, you so, mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Well, you, you reminded me that's that's something that's so innate when we think about like the game masters who are running games, 90% of the people that we see are white. And subconsciously, it's kind of automatic. When you have a game master telling you about an NPC, you assume the NPC is white Mm -hmm. automatically. Like it's, it's, and some of you have may have never thought about it. And it's not even like it's something to talk down about you. Mm -hmm. But when, when I see other game masters who are also black people, the characters become black to me. It's just, mm-hmm. isn't that because I'm seeing the game master project themselves into this character? And there is, it's not even that there are, aren't are like that many black game masters. We see them even less than we see the players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if we do see them, it's the ones who are popular. I, I'm glad that people know who I am, but I don't want to be some of people's favorite black game master. <laughs> It's just another form of tokenism, and they don't realize it. Yeah, yeah. that's. Oh, yeah. can can we talk about? I want to say. I, I, I really want to. I want. I want to get into some topics that are in game, 
but are still us as people playing this game. Because I, I'm just going to open up real quick and say, um, and I, I need to... This is going to be an ASMR version from the Critical Bard. Do not only invite us when it's today. Do not only invite us when black people get killed. Do not only invite us for 30 days during Black History Month, something that half of you in this chat didn't even recognize this year. Yes, I watched. Got him. This has been ASMR Bay, critical part. If you're gonna invite us to the table, make sure we're not eating alone. Mm -hmm. Extend the table. Let us not be the only person. It's it's uncomfortable and it's awkward. And again, diversity is not just a bunch of white girls with different color hair. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what I was gonna say before we had ASMR break <laughs> was <laughs> no, it was it was fine because you you that led right into what I want to talk about. And this may sound cruel to people, but guess what? I don't care. It has been like black folks Pokemon on Twitter and Instagram and an email. And it's been like, I don't know any black people. Do you know black people? Can you tag 50 black people? And oh my God, where are they? I've never looked. I've never been outside. And I say this semi-sarcastically, we've been here. Mike Pondsmith is black. In case people didn't know, granted, I didn't know until I met the man five years ago because I didn't know anything about CD Projekt Red and what he does. But regardless, Cody Pondsmith is black. We're all here and we're not hiding. We're all on shows. We all write. We all do everything. We stream. And if maybe, just maybe, you'd get outside your bubble and learn that black folks have been here, you wouldn't be doing the, oh my God, the world is burning and we killed black people and now I need to realize I was a terrible fucking racist. And not hood and, and cross on the lawn racist, the mm -hmm. systemic racism that was bred into all of us mm -hmm. and prejudice and everything else. Well. So can we, like, it's nice to be recognized, but on the other hand, it shouldn't take in all this. We should can not we be in a crisis. Like when I saw Christina at D&D Live, I was like, I'm never letting you go. There's another black woman here. <laughs> be completely so. honest when i started with all of the the gaming community i did not see that many black people and but i've been used to that you know most of my life and most of the communities and things that i've been involved in i'm mm -hmm. always like okay time to be the change i want to see but then i started to look at twitter profile after twitter profile after twitter profile after twitter profile and after you get to about 40 you say we've got a good sized church here like if all these people were in the church you'd still pass by and say there's no black people mm -hmm. Um, and as a DM, because I do more of that than playing, that was a unfortunate reality. I've set up four games and tables at a gaming store and had people, you know, with all types of ally badges on and talking all the kind of stuff, sit at the table and be like, so when's the DM going to get here? And then all my players looking at me and going, that's her. Like, oh, you know, um. But at the same time, you know, last time I went to a convention and I had set up my table and again, the only black person DM that was in there, there was this father and daughter and they're a black man, his little black four-year-old. And she ran into the room and he's like, there's nothing in this here for us to play, baby, let's go. And she ran up to my table and climbed up to the table and sat down and started playing with the dice because I was sitting there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know i took some pictures hugged her gave her some dice and you know i told her to come a little bit later so she could play with the other kids but it makes a difference when you are present um and it makes such a difference for the people who are coming after us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, most important <clears throat> it's like we can do so much now and we are going to continue doing so much now, but at the end of the day, the next generation is going to be here. We need to make sure they have a place where they're comfortable, where they're safe, which is why I personally, I know you all feel the same, I personally am making sure that we are in these positions to be influential so when the next generation does rise up, they don't have to stress. They don't have to worry about being a sea of Caucasian, you know? Like, it, and that would have been cool for me to see growing up, but I'm not going to focus on the past. All I can do is influence the future, you know? Mm -hmm. 
uh, which it goes back into saying again, make sure you're inviting us to your table. I made a, um, it started off as a joke tweet, but it's so real. It was like, seriously, invite me to your streams. And when I say me, I mean us. And when I say us, I mean all black people invite me to your stream I invite me to your event, invite me to your panels. And I'm going to say something. And I love this person. This person is amazing. This is not about them. When I say this, they're just the example I can use right now. B. Dave Walters is not the only black person in the community. What I mean by that is whenever I see an event and there's only one black person and it's the same black person, you are tokenizing that person. Now, I know they are very influential and I know that that's not how they view it. And I'm not trying to push that narrative onto them either. But you have to understand if you only have that one black person in your corner, you're not doing the job you need to do. You need to make sure that you are befriending and supporting and being in the corners of all black people around you, all brown people around you. Because one person, you know, it's it's not going to... You can give one person a piece of candy, but all the other kids want some too, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not about them getting validation, them getting recognition, but it's once they get that piece of candy, they can start their own candy stores and then give other people candy. You see, it's it's a it's a growing system, and I hope that's I hope that's making sense. Like, well, it's it's what is the what is it, uh, Christina? That Andy always says that a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because think- you know, oh, go ahead, Christina. Oh no, you go ahead. You were like mid thing. No, no, go ahead, because I've talked enough. I, I will yell all day if you don't shut you me up. You never so talk enough. I love you. I love you, but, too. Uh, <laughs> I think, it, going back a couple of things ago, with the reaching out and the, mm-hmm. we're doing a follow these Black creators, which is great, but if you're tagging the exact same Black creators, because that's all that you know, mm-hmm. you only know these people, like, there's other people that exist that need to grow that need like to be lifted in that way and in another note every almost everyone on this screen like I know in a personal manner and I follow you I read your tweets every day I see the similarities that we deal with in being attacked online and having people say the things that they do to us and we're all very vocal about it so I want to say that it is very insulting when it took a knee on a black man's neck for you to realize that my experience was valid Mm -hmm. and for you to send me a message and say, I didn't know it was this bad Mm -hmm. or I never knew that your experiences were this way because you didn't listen. Mm -hmm. You actively chose to not listen to me as a person who is telling you, these are my experiences and this is what I've been through. And you have watched I know my numbers. You've watched like 500 people like this thing. It's come across your dashboard. Mm-hmm. You've seen it. You've half-assed talked about it. But to ignore people's experiences until it gets to its worst point says something about you. And it's something that you need to yeah. examine inwardly and check yourself on. Because just because it is not your experience doesn't mean it is not someone's experience and that is not our experience and that we are not in fucking pain and you ignored it and that is the part that gets me is you ignored the pain Mm -hmm. and you waited and waited until it was opportune you could have put out a statement supporting black people a long time ago a lot of Mm y'all but you didn't Truly you could have had our back a long time ago and I appreciate the support so this is not a slap in your face and I actually don't even have to fucking quantify that but that you know we exist you know we are here if we can pull this shit together in 24 hours what are you doing yeah because um the other day what during the massive weird stream like Matt shared the the stream out and somebody's like well this isn't it this isn't what you should do and trying mm-hmm. to tell people basically how to support. And mm-hmm. and I don't want to give this person airplay, so I'm not giving the at. But today, even talking about this stream, somebody jumped in with their All Lives mm-hmm. Matter and, and you're spreading hate. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, and I'm going to repeat what I said on Twitter. Mm-hmm. For the chuckle fucks in the back. For the chuckle fucks, sorry. That's a, that's a hashtag <laughs> chuckle fuck. Put that shit in the chat right now. That's a hashtag word. Hashtag chuckle fuck. Well, for the chuckle fucks in the back who, who just see, they see Black Lives Matter and they somehow in their imaginary world put 
Black Lives Matter, parenthesis, more when nobody said that, or they put only in front of it. Nobody has said either of those things. And the fact that we even saying that is such a big deal that y'all want to be out here talking about your looters and you deserve to be shot and and everybody wants to drag a black on black crime it's like the biggest black on black crime doesn't exist that y'all want to keep doing what about the the crime that happened to bringing my ancestors here Mm, mm, mm. and everybody who wants to cry about that go to the museum in dc go to the new smithsonian museum on black history go through those tunnels that make you feel like you're on a slave ship you will change your tune. And if you don't, you're heartless. And I literally see the museum in Montgomery. Go to Montgomery and see all the lynchings that took place. Mm -hmm. We've had to look at it since we were children and y'all are acting sensitive about learning about it now. I was five and I knew this shit was happening. Got my face. I literally said- That's my piece I want to speak to. Real real quick, I literally said something and I think people really saw it as a joke, but it's the truth. People talking about looters are bad and all these things and blah, 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 blah. How dare you loot the world? Da, 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 da. Yeah, you weren't saying that when you were looting this world from Native Americans who were here. You weren't saying that when you looted us from our home and brought us here to work for free, mind you. You didn't say any of that then, but now it's a problem. You need to understand something. The idea of rioting and looting and all this stuff is literally ingrained in this soil. So do not condemn something that is the only reason we're even here. Like, don't don't come for me unless I send for you because that's I, I don't got time for that. I will never have time for that. And you the, for you're not or? saying it because you give a shit. You are not saying it because you actually care about properties being destroyed or anything. You just want to avoid the main issue mm-hmm. and ignore it. And that's exactly how we got into this situation right now because of the guilt that I say it's give generational guilt versus generational trauma. And you guys have the generational guilt outweighing the trauma. And instead of studying the cause, like you're just going, oh my gosh, look at this. How did this happen? Like I did absolutely nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's not, no, you didn't personally own slaves. Your ancestors probably did. No, you are not out here with a fucking crop. You're not doing those things, but you are carrying on the systems. You are mm-hmm. playing into those systems. You are saying, well, what about a permanent eviction? You are saying anything to derail the original point that we have, which is to just treat us with common decency and respect. To not treat, like, identify the fact that we have different experiences. Understand that and honor that, but also don't be shitty don't touch my hair don't do all of these tiny things that are just unnecessary because you don't know what to do around black people you are so not used to being around black people that the first thing you do is like so obama who your hair you're very articulate why are you fucking surprised that i'm articulate i'm educated like to say that, do you understand that you're you when you are saying you are articulate, your implication was that I expected you to be ignorant. Mm-hmm. That is how that is conveyed. When you were saying these things, you can't think of anything character based, but you can think of all of these superficial things and all of these tiny things because that's what you think of black people. You go to every stereotype you know and you start pointing out out loud without consideration for our feelings. All of these things, as if you are shocked and surprised that we are just people. Brandon, okay. the problem is they think they're white knights when really they're the villagers that don't know anything because we're the adventurers. We're the ones who go through trials and tribulations every day. Every day is a new quest. Every day is a new something that has to go on. All I have to say is, look at the chat. How many, how many white people could deal with this chat? as their life all the time. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have to do that, it's not a choice, it's a requirement, changes the entire dynamic. And And the problem is that so many of even like well-meaning white people think that they have something to add and they don't realize that by being black in America, we have to become experts of white people. We have to learn how to navigate. We have to learn what you don't like about us this week We have to learn what you like about us this week. We have to figure out what we have to avoid, what we can't avoid all the time. We have to be experts. 
each one of us have to figure out what our own individual thing is. Black guys have to figure out how to work in America. Black women have to figure out how to deal with all that. We all have to figure out how to do that just to live, not even to, not even to succeed, not even to, to get beyond the bounds, just to be at zero. So when people want to come into a chat and they want to, to add in their two cents, the problem is they think it's two cents, but it's not. It's less than that, right? Because every time you look around at something bad that's going on, you can literally find a black woman going, hey, this is a bad idea. And everyone going, what, what is it? No, well, mm, um. and then later on they go to and they go, oh, well, I guess this is a problem. And then they give themselves the kudo for it, even though there's people, <laughs> usually minorities, who said what was up because of that perspective. When you're outside of that white culture, some of this stuff is so obvious because we can't plan, you know what I mean? At, at the best of our days, we know how to use things to our advantage, but it is never really ours. And we know that like the, the turn of public can change, right? Like we thought, I, I won't say it for everybody, but for me, I had a hot second when I was like, maybe with Obama in here, maybe like, maybe this is like a good, maybe this is a good step. Like maybe, you know, like we didn't like hop leap, but like, you know, and then immediately we did Trump. And that's like a, oh, so not only did we not make progress, but a chunk of America punished us for even wanting to have progress. Uh, that hits it. So really quickly, um, because unfortunately we only allowed in an hour to get into these discussions. Um, this is this is going to be an ongoing thing for me personally, and if you all are obviously invited back, uh, I think this is something that people really enjoy and really can benefit from. But I want to quickly yeah. guess, if you want, just go around really quickly, um, just to bring it back full circle. What can, to lay it out, in your opinion, what can white people do to support black people in the TTRPG community? <laughs> yes, that, that simple. It's not simple, but that simple. Start with Tanya. <laughs> um, you know, buy our books, support our shows, retweet us. Don't sit there and go, I can't find black people. I've never been outside. I would, and, and for the love of God, don't just DM everybody, everybody you followed on Twitter in the last week and go, hey, we want to diversify our show. Can you be on our show? And we're only going to have you one time, but we want to show that we care about black people. Mm -hmm. And can we get emotional labor out of you too? Can you tell us how to fix our show? No. Also pay us. And I don't mean to just hand me money. If you want me to come and consult on your show, consult on your book, write for you and writing's a given. Do those things, but also have us there to be part of your shows, not just your one black friend that you brought on because you realized everything was super white. Bring us in at the ground, keep us there, and then help us get other opportunities. Don't just go, oh, I found this is my one black buddy and I'm gonna show them off to the world. We are not you know, like Pokemon, you know, get them all various shades of brown black folks in the RPG space. Mm -hmm. Promote each other. If you don't have money, that's fine. Reach or reach reads free. Follow folks on Instagram, but also listen, 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 listen. Don't talk over us and for us. That's all I got. That's real. Uh, Christina? Sorry, I just read something that made me annoyed. Oh, same. I'm saying, get off Twitter. Not all, no, no, I'm in the chat of this fucking thing. Oh. Stop with the not all white people. Excuse me, baby. You know good and <laughs> doggone well that that is not what we are saying. You know good and doggone well that we are not accusing you. Not everything is an attack on you. Mm -hmm. If you would stop getting defensive and listen, you might learn something. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to sit here and keep going, well, I never, if you didn't, then hush. That is the confidence I'm talking about that is violated when you speak back against our experiences, when mm -hmm. you get defensive and you make it about yourself. Stop centering yourself in things that do not concern you outside of the actions of, yes, not all, but that's not what we said. So don't do that just to derail our argument, our conversation. It's annoying. It's petty. It's childish. Mm -hmm. How do I think that we can be better? We can listen. We can listen. You can share our work. I know countless times where I've shared streams and people are like, I support you. Like when something goes down or someone says something racist, I want to support black shows. I want to support shows with black characters. And you don't. Mm -hmm. It's a click of a button, my dude. It's not that hard. You can listen to us. You can provide opportunities. You can make sure once again, that we are not the only black people at the table. That is frustrating. Like, and I would like, 
hey, we could have a black man and a black woman. We could have two black women. What? 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 Do you know how That's crazy it is? I played wow. with Tanya in Star Trek. Do you understand that they, I can count on a hand the number of times that I have sat at a table with another black woman? And Misty, and don't that, forget. And Misty. So there were three of us. Mm -hmm. It was three of us. Actually, we had a whole, almost a whole black cast yep. for Star Trek. But to sit there and go to these games and know that I know people like Aliza Pearl, know that I know people like Marquia McCarty, to know that I know all these people and we've never sat and rolled some dice together, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Make opportunities, but then make more. Don't stop and don't just do Ooh. it when we're getting killed. Make opportunities and then make more. That's, that's, a, that's a word. That's real. Um... Gabe. <laughs> I think mine actually relates to Christina's a little bit because one of the things that I had to tell someone, um, they're like, well, how, how can I get more people involved? If you have a hundred followers, 500 followers, whatever number, take the emotional energy and look through your followers that you have that are black people who obviously are interested in tabletop mm -hmm. and maybe no one has reached out to them. Mm -hmm. Literally, it takes one person to be like, hey, like, do you wanna, you wanna play in a watch? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's streamed. But if you give someone that entrance that they needed to feel like they belong, then they will go do what else they need to to give someone else that entrance. I didn't get involved in this tabletop community really until someone invited me to a game because I said I wanted to do something and I was following him. I hadn't done any much of this stuff before, but they were like, you know what? You you seem like you want to do it. Like let let me help you. Mm -hmm. And that took me to get to this point where I'm trying to help other people. So spend the emotional energy if there's like if you look through your followers and there's hundreds of black people in the tabletop like universe that you didn't even know existed but were there mm -hmm. and aren't doing anything with it is it because no one is offering them the chance to that's real uh brandon we got about five more minutes i i got another for them because they know they know <laughs> if, well, there's one thing i realized this week suddenly they know like i said everyone wants to pretend like they don't know where black folks are until they need it then all of a sudden they know where we are and they know how to tag us. I know what's up. Just, you know, tag me any other day of the week. Just don't tag me for black stuff. And um, the biggest thing I want people to realize is like, this is not a movement. This is how things are going. Mm -hmm. I could tell you from firsthand experience, just from the first Kickstarter I had, there are so many young black POC creators out there. They're not going anywhere, baby. We're here to stay. So like you can either get on board and you end up like Dave this morning and end up with no followers, no sponsors. That's it. Period. Periodic table. It's that simple. Uh, Michael. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, reiterating points here, give us opportunities. Um, we also like, you know, Christina said, like, if you can't, uh, if you can't uh, support people monetarily, then, you know, give them opportunities, retweet their stuff. But it, at the end of the day, we live in a plutocracy mostly. So, you know, I want to get my F's out. So fuck you, pay me if you're going to, you know, get us there and, and want us to participate, you need to support us and not just with like retweets and, and, and stuff. If, if that's all you can do, do that. But you have to support us, uh, you know, with at least some sort of resources because, you know, for me, I can speak that I had to do a lot of my own free time looking into things, be on social media just to promote my stuff. Like so many hours are just like, hey, I'm here. I'm trying to do good by the community. I'm here to uplift others, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm still working on that. I'm not perfect, but um, but I'm still like, this is the, as they said, as much black people as we've seen at a table, like collectively all in one go. So like, we're here to lift each other up and please do so by us as well. And and, and we'll we'll try and get it out there. That's, that's it for me. Uh, honey. I get accused of toxic positivity because I've tried to focus so much more on the light and the love and the empathy because doing things like sitting here and reading this chat is a very overwhelming and heartbreaking thing. So you ask, you ask about what people can do better. I don't know what's so wrong with being kind. I don't know what's so wrong with if something isn't about you, don't engage. Mm -hmm. 
if it's something you don't like or not interested in, no one's coming for you. Mm-hmm. So it hurts that it's so hard for people to just be kind. Um, and I just want to um, um, end it in a way, but just to reiterate what everyone has said, this is our life. This isn't a game. This isn't a fantasy. This isn't something you can go to a character creation table and say, I'm dark. I think you have to live that for three hours in a day with some dice and then put it away until the next week. That's just not how it works. This is us. And all we want you to do is listen to support, to always always be there not just one day not one week not one month not one special holiday not black history month not when we get killed not when we get shot not when we get arrested we just want you to be here and see us and appreciate us and as michael said fuck you pay us that's all we want because we're not going anywhere in case that wasn't realized yet um, thank you all for being here. Thank you to Tanya, Christina, Gabe, Brandon, and Michael and Honey for joining me on this um, very important discussion. I wish it could be longer. Um, I will make sure that this next time it will be at least two hours, at least, because it seems like we can talk this long. I didn't. I wasn't sure, honestly. Um, we can talk. We can talk oh, for yeah. a long, oh, periodically yeah. time. I am realizing it's never been an issue. Um, but seriously. Um, Support black people, support black lives, black lives matter. All lives can't matter until black lives matter. We're not saying black lives matter only. We're just saying don't kill us and support us and be there. Thank you all so, 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 so much. And we'll be seeing you soon. Bye. Stay black.